What's good, everybody? My name is Paul the Fit. Fit. I'm hosting a new series of interviews as part of my Connections playlist. I'm calling it Angels, Airwaves, and Frequencies. This is a series of interviews where I'm bringing in my friends, maybe some celebs, we'll be talking about life, love, music, the struggles, the good, the bad, and the beautiful situations we have encountered as of recently. The reason I'm doing this is because this thing called life is tough. tough. The last year has presented the world with many issues, a global pandemic, financial crisis, not knowing what's next, the feelings of hopelessness. But let me assure you, there is hope. hope. These are real life stories. They will leave you feeling inspired, encouraged, and with a renewed sense of hope. Our guardians are our angels. This is being broadcast over airwaves via video and podcast. And the frequencies are the positive vibes being sent from me to you. Welcome to Angels, Airwaves, and Frequencies. What's good, ladies and gents? Welcome to another episode of Angels, Airwaves, and Frequencies. I'm your host, Paul the Fit Fit. Now, this one is super special to me because I met Eric Parker in 2014, a year before I even moved to Nashville. I've got to say that he is the most positive and inspiring individual that I have ever met in my entire life. He's not only become a good friend, he's got a cool motto, you got this. He's even written a children's book about a gorilla named King. It's really cool, I hope you can check it out and I'll post the Amazon link in the description. It took us about three attempts to finally make this happen between schedules, sickness, and weather. It's left me feeling encouraged and inspired and I hope it does the same for you. Here it is. Hey everybody, my name is Paul and I'm here with my good friend, Eric Parker. Hey guys, how's it going? I thank you so much for working with me and trying to get together. I know it's taking us about two or three weeks just with <laughs> weather, work, sickness and everything, but we are finally here. We had a great it. chance to catch up before this at Panera. How's life going? It's good, man. It's good. It's been a wild ride of a year. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm glad that we were able to make this work. For I sure. am too, it's... because it's been probably, I'd say at least two to three years since we've seen each other at the last so yeah. touring career workshop. Yeah. That would have been in November of 2019. If we knew then what was about to happen. <laughs> exactly. That's sure. why I wanted to have you come. I'm starting a new series for my YouTube channel. I'm calling it angels, airwaves, and frequencies. And if you guys don't know, Eric Parker is one of the most positive people I have ever met in my life. So I just <laughs> wanted to- lot. Thank you. You're welcome. It, it's well-deserved and can't go unnoticed, but I just wanted to take some time to talk about how being in the touring industry as an LD or lighting design tech how things have changed over the last 12 months and how we've adapted and how we've made it and made ends meet. Yeah, for sure. So um, basically what happened March 13th of 2020 um, is kind of the date that everything pretty much shut down. Literally all tours um, around that time started going home and nobody worked in the live entertainment industry because of obviously the COVID-19 pandemic and um, it wasn't safe to have large gatherings together. And that's, to do our job, we need to have a lot of people together to have that are having a great time that buy tickets and come to our shows in order to be successful at doing our job. So most people within our in entertainment industry, there's 13 million people that lost their jobs pretty much overnight. Nothing that we did, nothing that we could do, it just, they went away because of, because of the pandemic, so. It's, uh, it's been a wild ride, but I think, you know, what's been inspiring is the entertainment industry, the, the people and the individuals have come together really well to, um, to support one another and help one another and to push one another through the tough times and um, help, you know, just pull, pull one another through as, as well, you know? And it's cool to see so many of my friends pivot and do different things just to make ends meet, to provide for themselves and their families, and um, it's cool, yeah. It is, and 
I agree with that wholeheartedly. And before we came out here, we we're talking about a mutual friend that we have that I actually met at the Touring Car Shop because of you. Uh, his name is Zito, and he has started the Z Bakery. And yeah. I've supported him. I know you have too. But it's been so cool to see everybody making something when nothing was happening. Somebody else that I want to mention is a good friend, Mark. Mark Ali, who is filming us right now, of Ali Visuals, you know, playing drums here in Nashville. Everything kind of went to a standstill there. Uh, Mark's created his film company, so I've had him help us out with the lighting, video, and audio. So, big thank you to you, Mark. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, everybody's, it's cool to see everybody's passions, like side hustles and side passions that they've had for for maybe their entire career is how they've, you know, really flourished through it. Because mm -hmm. once you're at home and you can't do anything, and like, to be a good citizen, you have to stay home and not do anything for however long that was, you know, people were just diving into their hobbies and the things that they were passionate about that they didn't have time before. And it's been, yeah. For sure. I wanted to kind of backtrack a little bit to let okay. everybody know how our friendship began. Oh, yeah. So I'm from a small town in Indiana called Evansville. And in 2008, to go back even before that, I got a job in retail working at an AT&T store. I met a guy named Brad Caver, who happened to be a bus driver for a company here out of Gallatin, Tennessee called All Access. Yeah. And he told me about a company called, at the time it was Morris Light and Sound. Well, they've changed their name to Experience Morris. I started following them online on Facebook I found out that they were a sponsor for the Touring Career Workshop. So I drove from Evansville to Nashville one night to attend, not knowing what to expect. And if you've ever been to it, you may know that there's the beginning, you have many breakout sessions. Well, you were speaking about your life at the time, how you were going through college at Belmont University working at Kroger, just life in general as a college student. And that still today, well, that still to this day has resonated with me and stuck. So can you tell me a little bit about that time in your life and how you yeah. made that, made, made it through and just put everything together? Yeah, for sure. Um, and just to give a little backstory in the Touring Career Workshop, if you don't know what that is, um, a good buddy, mentor, friend, partner in this uh, nonprofit. We started it in 2011. Um, his name's Chris Lyle. We started the Touring Crew Workshop in 2011. And it really, our goal was to be the human resources for touring production professionals. So we have an annual workshop seminar every year um, that we bring together the human resources side of, um, of what we do in the live entertainment world because there's not typically you know, you don't typically get health insurance or 401ks and you have to fend for yourself in a lot of those aspects as well as accounting. And then we also have, um, you know, sessions on families and, you know, how to handle and manage uh, your time and, and have balance. So that's what the Touring Career Workshop is. We started that in 2011 and it's been, it's grown incredibly since then. But um, yeah, the Kroger, so I had a dream when I was in high school to move to Nashville to work in the country music business. Um, if I'm honest, I want to be Garth Brooks, but I don't have talent or an image, so I pivoted, and that's that. But I, uh, to get me to Nashville, I went to a college, Belmont, which is a very incredible school. Um, and you know, my little backstory: my dad passed away when I was in a senior in high school um, of cancer after three and a half year battle. Mom wasn't in my life since seventh grade. Um, my grandma, you know, was raising four other younger kids and just being the incredible woman she is. So I was an independent student and didn't have money or anything. So long story short, there was a, an amount that uh, federal student loans would cover. And then there was an amount that Belmont needed. And mm -hmm. so I had to fill those gaps every, every semester, really every month. So this particular semester, it was, um, it got to the point where it was a pretty significant amount of money for, especially for a college student. And um, when I kind of realized and got the bill before the semester, I called, I worked at a grocery store in town uh, as a cashier at night, part-time, and I called him and was like, I need a full-time job and I need it at night because of school. Mm -hmm. So 
they gave me a meat clerk position, third shift meat clerk position. So I was stocking the shelves of all the sandwich meats and the ground beef and stuff. But I worked 10, 10 30 p.m. or 10 p.m. to 6 30 a.m. I'd have a class about 9 a.m. I'd have class until about 2 or 3 p.m. Then I would have to like get up to go to the cafeteria to get the free food by like I think 7.30 or 8 is when they closed. So we would do that and then I would keep doing that. Which doesn't leave much time for sleep and it doesn't leave much time for um, studying or homework or anything in that entire period. So I did that for several months um, and really was draining myself and it was draining. You know, I didn't have a social life at that point. As a college student in a dorm and there's a lot of people around me, I was also just exhausted. Like. I was not a pleasant person to be around just because how tired I was. Um, and it hit this point. It, it taught me a few things. One, perseverance and pushing through. And it really, you know, it allowed me that opportunity to, like, push every boundary that I thought I could have, which is mm -hmm. incredible. But at the end of, at the end of that semester, um, I was driving to a friend's house. So I worked Monday through Friday nights. So Saturday nights were my night to, like, enjoy my friends and go out and have a good time so i was mm -hmm. driving it was about 30 minute 30 minutes outside of town and it was a two-lane road and i was driving in my 1995 chevy astra van and uh i dozed off as i was going and i woke up and i was halfway over the center line and there was a motorcycle followed by a bunch of cars right behind it and literally like all i woke up to everybody honking and i jerked over and that was the moment for me i was like i'm done i'm out um finished if this is what the dream takes like this isn't it and i called my grandma and i told her that and she's like finish out the year it's gonna be okay um and but i quit that job i put in my two-week notice and you know it was shortly after that that my first job in the lighting business actually came to fruition chris was my teacher at the time the only class that i was doing well in and he uh he had a he was like hey there's a company in town bandit lights and they're looking mm -hmm. for interns in the summer if anybody's interested and i was like Okay, yeah, like, you know, I had done lighting a little bit, but at school, but that's it, and that's kind of how that flourished, but it was a moment of history that, you know, like, it took a lot. Like, you know, I was making $1,500 a month and paying 1200 of that to Belmont because just to stay and just to keep going, and it was, you know, all to chase a dream that is a dream at that point, you know? We don't know, we don't know what the other side of it looks like, and that's kind of some of the magic of dreams and also some of the the hardships of you know keeping pushing when you're in those moments for sure i can definitely relate because when i was going to sae i was in the audio technology program we'd have courses from usually 10 to about one mm -hmm. but for me i didn't really have a job i was doing uber so that was my job but same thing everybody wanted to go do parties and have cookouts well, the bills didn't pay themselves, so exactly. I can relate. I had to do yeah. exactly that. But that was a great connection for you from being part of Chris's class, ultimately becoming part of his touring lighting company. Yeah, can you absolutely. tell me a little bit about some of your experiences out on the road and what you liked, maybe didn't like, some of the thrills and everything that goes with that? Yeah, so I... Um, I started, I've lit with a bunch of bands. I've worked with them. I've, I started with a band called Emerson Drive. It's a Canadian band. And I actually started my between my junior and senior year of college. I went out for a month. And then after college, I worked with a guy named Billy Currington for three years, which we had so much fun. And that was incredible. Um, and then I went with, you know, One Republic for about a year and a half. And they took me all around the world. And we just did unbelievable things. And then I came back and I worked with like Need to Breathe and Jennifer Nettles and Sugarland and um, Leanne Womack and a bunch of other artists. My favorite moment of all moments is that time that the house lights goes on before I actually do anything. And before the band even shows up on stage, like the house lights go down and the audience loses their minds. It's that moment where you realize like, you know, they've paid their, they paid hard earned money to sit in that seat. They've taken time away from whatever their life is. And in this moment, no matter what happens in their world, no matter what, you know, bad news they might have gotten or stressful situations they're in, like, this is the moment they're just going to escape. And that's what got me into the business. Um, so that's that's what always keeps me thriving. And then throughout the shows, you know, just seeing the fans' connections and the artists grow. All of the artists I've worked with 
um, for the most part, have grown exponentially while I've been with them, which is unbelievable to see. For sure. I can totally understand and relate to the excitement and the buzz. So the whole reason that I was able to come down here was because my friend Brad, I just mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, he called me up one day and said, hey, I'm rolling through town and I've got you stage passes. And it was for a tour with Casey Musgraves, uh, Kip Moore, and Lady A. So I called out of the job that I had for the day. I got to meet Casey's uh, front of house engineer, set up, get the drum set up as a drummer that was just an amazing thing to get everything plugged in and uh, routed and got to see some of the stuff on the board. And like you said, she was the opening act, got to have dinner with her in the green room, so cool. And I'm talking to the sound techs and they're all like, this is what we do. But I'm like, this is amazing guys, where'd you learn how to do this? And like, well, the whole tour's based out of Nashville and we're from Belmont. And I'm like, cool, I gotta find a way to get down there. But, like you said, as the lights go down, Casey's coming on stage, you just hear this roar, you can feel this excitement, you can feel the adrenaline rush any moment, this show is going to happen. Yeah. But you're the one creating that tension and buzz and excitement. What's that feeling like for you? I mean, are you nervous? Are you excited? Are you just like focused in on that moment? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely at that point very focused in. Sometimes I'm, I've, I've been nervous. Um, I get nervous before every show because just in case, you never know what's going to go wrong. It's technology and it's, it's the real world, right? But um, the cool thing is, is, you know, being on the road is super difficult and it's stressful and you don't get much sleep a lot of times and you're working really hard and if things go wrong throughout the day, it just makes your day harder. And so you might be like exhausted, but come that moment, nothing else matters. Like your job is to make sure that the artist has the best show they could have in, in your capacity, you know, everything you could do, and that the fans have the best experience that they could have. Like nothing else matters and everything else from the rest of the day goes away. And usually my nerves go away within the first song. Okay. Like if I ever get nervous, just because the adrenaline's pumping and you're going, and um, yeah, it's really cool. Gotcha, yeah. And like you said, things happen. Every venue is different from venue to venue. Yeah. Some places may have power one spot, maybe somewhere else. Maybe trussing and rigging didn't get things right. They're off on a point. Can you... Would you be willing to maybe share with me and everybody watching any <laughs> mistakes that have happened out on the road and how you've overcome that during a show or anything? Um, yeah, I'll share a couple without actually naming any names. But one of them, I have two. One of them was a rigging thing. And I, don't, I haven't thought about this in years. But we were playing somewhere, I want to say the Carolinas maybe, a fair of some sort. And we basically hang everything everything's in the air we're show ready and i look up and the way rigging works is there's you know there's these steel cables that come down to points and we hang a motor uh a motor chain on it and the chain the motor brings up all the hoist it up yeah. yeah and one of those steel cables was just like bent in circles and like not carrying any tension and the other one coming from another and it was a building that was super weird like i think it was a steel cable roof or something so we look up and we're like what do we guys we got to fix this and they look at us and they're like what do we do i'm like you're the riggers you are the people that are supposed to fix it like and we basically ended up having to land everything it was fine but that was a very big like that could have been a bad mistake thankfully mm -hmm. it wasn't everybody was fine and um but it was just a funny moment but another one you know like um i was on a tour and i was the ld i was the only person that really knew our video playback system which was on stage and we just had a bunch of issues with it. Um, I, I think it was like the way the content was coded or something, whatever the case was, we just kept having a couple, bunch of issues with it. And there was one day the artist is on stage at a piano, just him at a piano, and he starts playing a song and the, uh, the computer um, freaks out and it goes to basically like the home screen on Apple Oh no! To where on the video screen it's this big gray screen with the white, uh, the apple and all the the header, on it was and nobody on stage knew how to fix it or do anything and so it was me in front of house in a little club, 
And I'm like, just turn the video screen off. Just turn it off. We'll figure it out later. Which doesn't go very well when they can't have the video content for those songs. And then, <laughs> so I ended up, like, uh, before the encore, I took off and I ran through the crowd, down the stairs in this club, fixed it, and ran back um, before the encore started. And it was... Yeah, it was a nerve-wracking, adrenaline-pumping moment for sure. <laughs> I can totally relate to what you were just telling me. Uh, about two years ago, I was doing uh, work at Aldine's downtown, mm -hmm. and we had Cassidy Pope come in for uh, a day, and she was uh, a guest for a show that she was doing. And for some reason, we had some glitch with an HDMI cable, so I'd have to go back and forth from our tech booth over to the office and make sure that it did not go into power saving mode for the filming and everything. Yeah. Uh, big <laughs> issue that I made dealing with trust, I'm not going to name the company or anything, but I was working um, in audio for a convention and they said, hey, can you help strike lighting today? And I'm like, I've never done this before in my life, but you know, I'm glad to help out. Yeah. So as you mentioned before, you've got this truss that goes up and you've got uh, the, you know, your stands and then you've got the, the motor. So everything's down and the motor's in the middle. You've got all these cables. I didn't know what was DMX or what was this and what was that. So I just started unplugging things because that was what they asked me to do. Well, in the midst of all of that, I actually unplug the motor to everything too <laughs> amongst all the lights and they're like no you weren't supposed to do the motor and all this stuff because now we can't get things back up and it was a mess that happens all the time all the time it's to the point where we like I usually tape it all together like so people can't like they have to work hard to do it just because yeah yeah and one night That's I was funny. doing a sound for a singer songwriter uh, competitions down on the I'm not going to say where because I messed <laughs> up, but there's two levels on your iPad. You have a monitor mix and your front of house mix. Somebody was unplugging or plugging in their guitar and I didn't have it muted and pop! <laughs> and the PA is just great. So, <laughs> That'll wake everybody. And everybody's just like, what's he doing? And I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> I wanted to kind of really kind of hone in on um, when you said March 13th when you found out the touring industry was just coming to a halt, what was your first thought? Did you have an oh no moment, an oh no moment? How did you handle that? And what were your first thoughts? And are you like, what am I gonna do now? So at, on March 13th, there was optimism that we would have a July 4th show. So like, and we would be back up in the fall of 2020 and everybody would be working, right? So there was a, oh crap, how are we gonna deal with this for the next few months? But we didn't know what was to come. Come July, when things were not even close to looking like they were possibly, you know, any sun rising on the horizon or whatever, mm -hmm. um, that's kind of when I had my, oh crap, okay, this is gonna be, it's gonna take a minute, you know? Uh, but it was, for me, in that moment of March, in the middle of March, when like, you know, my friends are coming back from tour and, um, you know, Chris and I and our company, his company that I worked for, um, we were starting to look at all of the shows that we had booked through the year and they were all one by one kind of canceling and pulling out or, you know, whatever the case may be. It's nerve wracking. It's super stressful and it's frustrating, you know, and then it, it was it was a moment for me to kind of look at, like, what do I actually want to do and what is important? And, you know, the isolation of everything that came after that when we all went into quarantine for um super hard quarantine for those few months um it's it was hard just because you're not talking really to friends and you're not um you know you're not communicating with you're communicating a little bit but it's all via a facetime or a zoom call or whatever it's not like that personal let's go have a beer communication you know mm -hmm. um i did a bunch of fun projects i um kind of had these um mental things where I'm like, I have to do something. I just need to accomplish something because I hadn't accomplished anything. Like right. everything that I was supposed to accomplish, I didn't actually have to do that because the shows weren't happening. So at my house, I, uh, I built these benches, these, you got this benches in this little fire pit area, move boulders. And I think it's a 12 foot wide fire pit and hung some festoon lights and made this cool area that 30 people, once we can all 30 people get together, can go and hang out and just enjoy a really large hot fire. We've had those, though. We've, yeah, we've had hot fires, but um, yeah, so that was really cool. Um, I've 
I added a little video recording studio to my room just so, if, you know, as I need to make content or whatever, I can do that. And um, it's been cool. There's been uh, lots of little projects that, you know, and, that, and some of my passions, like, I love just cooking. I just really enjoy, like, being in the kitchen is kind of my, like, zen moment, mm -hmm. no matter what's going on. So I have really kind of honed into that and especially like smoking meats and briskets and pork and all that so yeah but um i think the hardest thing really came in july when it was like okay this is going to be around for a minute you know gotcha yeah it's a gut-wrenching gut-wrenching feeling when you know the industry you're in has no estimated time of getting back on its feet but thankfully you found work within amazon and keeping your feet afloat there and you're still able to get some of your passions done. Yeah. So you found ways to overcome and still live life and be healthy and everything. There's a lot of people that may be watching that are out of work, that are still in that moment of, I don't know what's next. You've started this you got this, I call it, you got this movement. <laughs> but what would you say to somebody that's struggling maybe to keep things afloat, keep bills paid? Maybe that single mom that's working two or three jobs like you were doing when you're going to school. What advice would you give to them to, you got this and not give up and just give them that good fight? Yeah, the you got this movement came from me having to tell myself that over and over and over like no and, and the phrase is no matter what life throws you away you have what it takes to overcome it and to come out on the other side bigger better and stronger than ever before you got this that's the full thing and it's even for me as of yesterday it's really hard to look in the mirror and tell yourself that because you're looking at your bank account you're looking at the bills coming in you're looking at you know the mouths that you might have to feed you're looking at the zero prospects of jobs. I've applied to 60 jobs so far, and I've gotten one interview, and I have, I work at an Amazon warehouse, which has been a godsend, and it's awesome, and it's keeping me busy, but that's it, out of all of the 60 jobs, nothing that's really technical have I done. And I've traveled the world and, you know, managed teams all over the place, and we've, you know, I have so many friends as well that are hurting and struggling and we're all in this together so what mm -hmm. i would say is first off you're not alone and as much as you feel like you are trust me i understand that you're not alone and reach out to your friends and talk to them and don't be afraid to ask for help at all like whether it's financially help which you know is most of us can't afford to do but even if it's just an ear to listen and just be like hey it's you know it's gonna be okay you know um it, it i would say just don't forget that this is a moment in history. More than anything, this is a moment in history. In the early 1900s, we went, they went through a moment in history. Our grandparents, I think about what they all went through with the Spanish flu and the depression and the wars and everything, you know? Like, they went through a bunch and they made it and as many quirks as my grandma had. <laughs> um, and it, you know, they still made it and at the end of the day, this is just a moment in history. Do not give up on yourself and go and go and look in the mirror and, you know, high five yourself and be proud of everything that you've done, everything that you've accomplished so far. You know, like look back at your life and all the little things that you've already accomplished. You're freaking we're strong people, all of us. Right. We've all accomplished and overcome so much. So don't forget those little things, you know. For sure, I love that. I'm that's giving me goosebumps <laughs> because I, I love that. And we were when we were at lunch, we we're really talking about focusing on the things that really are happening. So yeah, thank you for that heartfelt, just you know, true life, real advice. That's, yeah, absolutely. Uh, as we kind of wrap things up, I've got some just quick questions for you. Okay. So, awesome. Computers, Mac, PC. Mac. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> are you night owl morning person that's really hard because it changes and i work in the middle of the night right now so that's even really hard i'm usually a morning person um i get into these modes of like i'll be a night owl but i'm usually a morning person when i get up in the morning whether it's 8 a.m or noon i get up in the morning and i go and by like evening when i start getting to i'm done i'm going to bed okay yeah, morning one more, and I'll let you ask me a question. Coffee or tea? 
iced tea. Okay. Hundred percent. I don't. I'm weird. I don't like hot beverages. Any hot beverages. Um, and I cannot stand the taste of coffee. So iced tea it all the way. Gotcha. Panera bread iced tea, even better. <laughs> Number one Panera fan right here. So when I sent you the questionnaires, asked you if you wanted to ask me anything. Yeah. What question would you might have for me? So yeah, the first I would love. I have a couple questions, but the first one I think, um, you know, I love what you're doing here. I love this. Thank, Thank you. you for having me, by the way. But yes. I love you were telling me a little bit more about kind of your goals with Angels, Airwaves, and Frequencies, right? Yes. And I would love to just, what can you explain what you're trying to do and where, where this kind of came from? Yes. And where you're looking to bring it? So a friend of mine on social media, her name is Susan. She's an artist. She painted some pictures of angels for me. And... I'm pretty strong in my faith, and I've always felt like my great-grandmother was my guardian angel, always yeah. watching over me. I've wanted to, just like you, you're always positive and encouraging and inspiring. People are struggling on levels that are unprecedented right now. Our industry is still trying to make it come back. It's slow. So I wanted to inspire and encourage people so that's the whole faith part oh, the thank you so the airways is we're broadcasting this mm -hmm. visually i want to turn it into a podcast so people can listen when it comes to frequencies the human ear can hear 20 hertz to 20,000. well in the music production we like to roll off a lot of that muddiness and that stuff that doesn't matter uh, with the two things that we just talked about, just being positive and encouraging, inspiring, I want to give off positive vibes. So just a combination of those three things. I just want anybody that might be watching this to leave inspired and encouraged and just to know you got this. It's going to be this. okay. And life goes on, but we're still here. There's a reason. If you put your hand on your... Sorry for the mic. <laughs> if you put your hand on your heart still beating, there's a reason and a purpose for that. So that's my main goal with this. And I just want it to reach people wherever it can be reached. Well, I think that pretty much wraps it up for today. I, again, thank you so much for working around weather and work schedules to get this to actually come together and happen. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's been the biggest pleasure. All right, guys, my name is Polly, and this is my good friend, Eric Parker. You, you got, got this. this.